One of the prevailing thoughts of our time is the thought of God. Some people say there is a God. Some people say there is no God. Is there a God? Does God really care what happens to you and I on a day-by-day basis? Is God concerned about our world? And if he cares, if he understands what's going on, why does he permit it? Why do children in a lot of third world countries starve to death? Why are they abused? Where's God when all this is happening? When innocent people hurt, when bad things happen to really good Christian people, what's going on? What has happened? And, and if God is out there, why isn't he intervening in our world? Why isn't something being heard from God about the days in which we live? And actually, I would say to you that God has spoken about these times. Because you see in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul the Apostle speaks of the days that we're presently living in as perilous times, difficult times. These are times of angry. These are anger. These are times of terrorism. A lot of fear in our world. What, what's going on? How did we get here? What happened to us as a nation? We were once a God-fearing nation filled with people who worshiped God. And at, at one time, more than 90% of Americans believed that there was a God and believed that he cared about us. And now we are told that number is almost half. So why? Well, first of all, let's talk about the casualization of our worship and our efforts to worship him in spirit and in truth. Casualization. I don't even know if it's such a word, but we sort of casualized God. Actually, in the beginning, the Bible said God created us in his likeness and in his image. He wanted us to become more and more like him, to grow, mature, learn him, have experience with him. And, and, and become godly people. But in this day and time, it seems that people have flipped the switch, flipped the coin, and they've decided to create God in their image. They want God to become more like them. So we've developed this casual approach to God. God didn't permit that in the Old Testament. When the priests came to God, they must dress in a certain way. Their garments had to be without spot, without wrinkle, they had to be as perfect as possible that they could make themselves. They had to check themselves out to even enter the Holy of Holies and the presence of God. But you see, we've casualized that. And, and I'm not just criticizing the dress of the day. I mean, our culture is different. People can argue all they want to about cultural differences. There are cultural differences. We are like people of other generations. This is a new generation. About every 35, 40 years, a new generation comes on, and then we begin to pick up what they're like. But we've casualized our approach to God. It seems to me we're missing the fear of God. There are things that don't get taught anymore, like the fear of God. There, there are things that preachers don't touch anymore. I would say to you, I believe with all of my heart, being in the calling of a minister, that the biggest problem in this nation are ministers who refuse to pick up this book and preach the true word of God. We just don't talk about the things that are in this Bible as God and his son Jesus talked about them. We don't talk about hell very little said about heaven. We don't talk about righteousness, even though the universe is seeded with righteousness. How do we know that? Well, when we get into those deep, dark regions of the world where, where there are primitive people living and they, they have no running water, they have no electricity, and yet we find some kind of God there. Maybe it's in the main center of town. Maybe it's a pole or a tree or whatever. Something that says they believe in God. Where'd that come from? Because God put eternity inside of us. That eternity is inside of us so that we could be, be reminded there is a God. And, 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 and so we, we've tried to create God in our own image. We've, we've tried to make God more like us, but that's not how it works. That's a sure road to destruction. So we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. Preachers need to ask themselves, am I really preaching the truth? Am I afraid to preach the truth? Am I afraid to offend someone? Am I afraid that someone might get upset and leave the church and stop paying tithe and giving offerings? Well, what would I do if, if I lost this person or that person? What we need to do is preach the truth as it is in Jesus and let the chips fall where they may. We should not be afraid to address the issues of our day. Transgenderism, homosexuality, the perversion, the evil of our times. 
We should address these issues with the word from God. People say, oh, but he's a God of love. Oh, yes, he is. But he loves us too much to leave us in our sins. Anything that separates you and I from God is an idol. We've permitted idol worship even within our churches today. We've taken the casual approach to God, and it will never work. We must come to him in fear and in trembling. I don't mean a fear of torment. I'm talking about a fear of worship, recognizing who he is. We're talking about the God of the universe, the God who loved us so much he sent his only son into this world in the likeness of sinful flesh, who became sin for us, though he knew no sin, so that he could take all of our sins upon him, suffered, bled, died, rose again, ascended to the right hand of the Father, and sits there today as our great high priest and our great intercessor. And what is he doing there today? He's there to call upon the Father and say, I'm representing them. Actually, you could call him our defense attorney because that's what the Bible says he is. We have an advocate a defense attorney with the Father, Jesus Christ. And you know what? He's never lost a case. He knows the word. He knows the Father's heart. So let's get back to the truth. Where are those days of glory? When the glory of the Lord, the glory cloud, if you would, would descend upon the people. It would descend upon the tabernacle, the meeting place. And no priest could enter. No one could walk in because the glory was there. Like when Moses was on the mountain and the glory surrounded the mountain. The glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory, the visible glory. Where is the glory? It only comes when we seek his face. It only comes when we bow before him. It only comes when we humble ourselves before the almighty God and say, not my will, O God, but yours be done. It only comes when we begin to measure up to the teachings of his word. We need to get back to the message of the kingdom of God. And we need to start worshiping the God of the kingdom, the kingdom that has laws and principles. So one of the reasons I wrote the book, the kingdom book, which literally talks about living the fourth dimension, which is the kingdom. Years ago, there was a book called The Secret, false, fake in every sense of the word as far as the message it was trying to portray, trying to tell people that there is some secret and if you tap into it, all these good things are going to happen to you. You're going to be rich. You're going to have all this stuff. Well, that's really not the true secret. The true secret is the kingdom. No question about it. Plug into it and your life will be changed forever. Plug into it and you will have the daily guidance of the Holy Spirit in your life. Plug into that and heaven will be opened over you. But you'll never get there until you humble yourself and seek his face. Call upon his name. <laughs>